What's up YouTube, Dario here from Zerval Games, bringing you a test turn video for the invoked Wind Witch deck profile that I did for you guys the other day. Now we're going to do our standard three test turns going first and three test turns going second. The goals are to get an invoked mech bar and, uh, or an indestructible crystal wing going first and second. Obviously second being more aggressive and mech um, first going more defensive. So our first test turn of five will be an Alistair the Invoker, a Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, a Gamma Seal, a Solemn Strike and a Spellbook Magician of Prophecy. Now this is very, very interesting because in this scenario we can kind of ride our luck and push for a um, Crystal Wing, which will be the gamble play if we use Spellbook Magician of Prophecy, but the safe play is to get a Mech Bar out. So we would normal summon our Alistar. Alistar would then search us out our Invocation. We would then activate our Invocation Banishing or sending our ghost ogre, um, banishing our Alistar and sending ghost ogre to graveyard, and that straight away gets us a mechba, and he goes up there. Um, mechba, uh, sorry, invocations effect will then shuffle itself back into deck and then give us an Alistar back to hand. We then set the strike. Um, so at this point, we basically have a strike that can then negate stuff, and mechba can then also negate a monster effect. Um, it will just be a real shame should our opponent open up with a Raigeki. Um, but that is just the way of the world, unfortunately, on this one. So we'd set our Solemn Strike and pass. If our opponent wants to try and beat over Metbar, we can drop an Alistar to boost him up should we need to. Um, but we kind of hit our target there with getting a um, Metbar on board. We could have gambled it with the um, Spellbook Magician. But there's no guarantee on that, whereas this was the guaranteed safe play. Okay, so our second test down going first. Let's go one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now this is a bit more of a safer play if we use our Spellbook of Knowledge because we then send our Spellbook Magician of Prophecy to the graveyard to draw two, and straight away we go into a Magical Meltdown, which gives us, we have the ability to go into a Purgatrio, but like I've said before, um, we can pretty much go into whatever we want because we have the Book of the Law. So if we activate Magical Meltdown, go into our um, Alistar, normal summon our Alistar, Alistar then searches us out a uh, invocation. We then activate our invocation. Now at this point we can either, depending on what you feel you're going to use later on, um, is is really down to you. I would personally rather hold on to these guys um, and just go banish the spell book because uh, the blue boy, I'm not going to use him again this turn. Banish the Alistar, send the invocation. Special summon out our Courtius. Um, we can then use invocations effect, spin that back, add Alistar back to hand. And we have two options now. If we think our opponent's going to use something crazy first turn, I would say turn Coitus into um, Mech Bar right away. Or if we want to catch our opponent by surprise, we set the Book of the Law and we pass to our opponent. And then during their turn, whenever we feel they might play something, we can activate Book of the Law, turn Coitus into a Mech Bar. Mech Bar obviously has the ability now to negate spells and monsters, plus we've got Ash Bottom to stop our opponent, special summon in from deck, send it to graveyard, or add in, a de uh, add in from the deck. We also have Alistair that can then boost up Mech Bar by a K, and then if they put anything on board that's dangerous, um, that we haven't dealt with with our Mech Bar, we can Kaiju it next turn. So that was a nice defensive kind of play, and you can see how Book of the Law um, can be helpful in this deck, um, purely because in a scenario where you go, oh, I can't make a Met Bar and I can't make a Raijin, Book of the Law, kind of, as long as you can make an Invoked Monster, um, allows you to step that up a bit. Anyway, let's do our final test hand going first and see what we can get. One, two, three, four, five. Actually quite nice on that one. Um, because what we could do is we'll Terraform into Deckfin. And go into think they'll think. Uh, go into our magical meltdown. We'll activate our magical meltdown again to deck Finn and search ourselves out an Alistar. Now we have two options here. We can normal summon our Alistar to search out our invocation again, deck Finn in that little bit more, 
or we can normal summon our Wind Witch Glass Bell. That is entirely up to us how we want to do this. Now, the worst case scenario <laughs> is our draw play um, kind of spirals us out. Anyway, let's go with the normal summon of the Alistar to deck in a little bit more to search our invocation. Now, what we don't want to happen from our spell book is to draw into the second glass spell. Um, if we draw into the ice spell, it's not the end of the world. Uh, snowbell, sorry. If you draw into the snowbell, it's not the end of the world because we can still special summon it from hand, but it minimizes our deck fin abilities. So let's shuffle this up good. Then we'll activate our spellbook of knowledge, send in Alistair to Graveyard and draw in two. Spellbook of Secrets and a Ghost Ogre. So that's actually helped us out quite nicely. Um, We'll activate the Spellbook Secrets to deck fin a little bit more. You can go into Bluebell or you can go into another Knowledge for next turn. It's entirely up to you which one you want to do. This is pure just deck finning options. You can hold on to the Spellbook of Secrets so you have both options. Um, and now it's kind of down to us. We have a Mech Bar play or we have an Indestructible Crystal Wing play. So it's entirely up to you which one you want to go with. Um, the Crystal Wing play kind of negs our opponent a little bit more because we would Special Summon the Ice Spell. Um, and then just kind of go off from here. So Ice Spell would then special summon our Glass Spell. Effect, effect. One would burn, one would search. Um, special summon Snowbell because control two winds. Sync up our Wind Witch Glass Spell and Ice Spell into. Where are you? Our Wind Witch Winter Bell. Winter Bell then targets. Um, glass Bell Engraved, burning our opponent for another 800 life points or a further 800 life points. Sync these up into a indestructible crystal wing. Um, we then have the ability to set our Twin Twister and hold on to the rest. Now, if we went with Met by, he had the ability to negate monsters and spells. With this one, we've kind of got a Twin Twister to clear any back row our opponent might go because you can pitch this ghost, uh, Glass Bell should you need to. Um, pitch your Ghost Ogre. Um, and go from there. So you kind of have enough stop in play as well. It's just entirely up to you on how you wanted to play that. Like I said, Indestructible Crystal Wing or Mech, but we're both at our disposal from that. Okay, so now let's be aggressive. Let's see how much damage we can do to our opponent's life points, shall we? And see how much difference that extra card makes. Oh, hello. So, our first test hand of going second will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now, you have two options here. I personally would say because that was in our open hand, I would have used that. I would like to think I would have used that. If I didn't use it, then there were obviously there would have been a reason for it. But I would like to think I've played Ash to kind of slow my opponent down. Uh, we'll activate Terraform into Deckfin. And while we're at it, we'll also activate Spellbook of Secrets to deck thin that a little bit more. So we'll get ourselves a Magical Meltdown, we'll get ourselves a Spellbook of Knowledge, um, we'll activate one Magical Meltdown and that will search us out an Alistar. Um, now in this kind of this kind of play, In this kind of play, you can, um, sorry, brain went numb there. <laughs> um, you can activate Spellbook of Knowledge and get rid of Magician Prophecy from your hand, or you can hold on to him because he can, might be quite useful next turn should you need it. So my personal opinion would be, I don't know why I'm shuffling, Normal Summon Alistair the Invoker, um, search out an invocation, activate your Spellbook, uh, spellbook of Knowledge, Pitching Alistair, well not pitching, sorry, but getting rid of Alistair from field and plus in two. Now we've already used the spell because he was this turn, so that's a dead card waiting to be used. So is the blue bell because we've used our normal summon. Magical Meltdown is also a dead card right now. Um, your Ghost Ogre can be quite helpful should your opponent want to try and activate anything during your turn. Um, if they do, you go into a met bar. But to be more aggressive, the fact that we're going all out here, I think our stronger play is to Invocation, Banish our Ash Blossom, Banish our Invoker, go into our Purgatrio. Depending on how many monsters our opponents got on the board, Purgatrio is going to be getting quite a nice boost. Activate Invocation, sending that back and adding Invo uh, Invoker back to hand. 
we now have, if we have the, if we want to, depending on what type of boost this has got as well, we can then drop an extra 2k on top of Purgatory. Now this is just being aggressive, this is just to do as much damage as we can. I'm not saying always do that, um, but then obviously next turn we do have the abilities to extend a little bit further because our Magical Meltdown will search us out an Alistar. Um, which then leads into an invocation should they clear Purgatrio off. We also have Spellbook of Secrets that can then pitch Spellbook Magician to get a double draw. Not to mention Ghost of Ogre to interrupt our opponent as well. So it does have a lot of disruption and a lot of um, sustainability, which is really, really nice in a deck. Okay, now we'll do our second test stand going second. In that case, because of Purgatrio, it, it could be Purgatrio could do anything from um, like, he could have done anything from 2,000 damage all the way up, um, depending on how many monsters our opponent had on the board and if they had anything to deal with Purgatrio. And the best thing about that is they couldn't warn in our invocation because we had Meltdown in play. Anyway, our second number six is, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, obviously, as we always do, we'll replace Max C for a one for one. Uh, and that actually helps us out quite nicely. Uh, if we activate Spellbook of Secrets, we will search ourselves out um, our Spellbook of Knowledge. Normal summon our Alistar. Alistar is going to search us out an Invocation. We actually have quite a strong play here. Obviously, if our opponent had any dangerous monsters on board, we would have kaiju them, and then we get ourselves a Kaiju as well. Um, so let's do that. We'll activate our Spellbook of Knowledge, clearing off our Alistar, plus in two more. Not the two you really want to see, but um, it does give us like a rise in play. Okay, now in this scenario, obviously give your opponent a Kaiju, give yourself a Kaiju, because then straight away you've already got uh, a big beta on board. Uh, then activate your Invocation. Your Invocation will get you either, because we want to go all out aggressively, it can get us a Magnalicia. Um, it's entirely up to you how you want to go about this. Depending on what your opponent's got, you can go into a Raijin and flip one of their monsters face down to kind of guarantee you um, by doing so. I'll show you what we've got. So if we use Alistar, send Glassbell to Graveyard. Doggy's going mental, I do apologise. Uh, getting Alistar the Invoker to fill out. Banishing Alistar the Invoker. Going into our Invoked Raijin in our extra monster zone right up there. He can use his effect, I wouldn't flip Camasil down, uh, to flip another one of our opponent's monsters face down. Um, and then, what you can do is you can activate Book of the Law. Not right now, but you're going to battle phase. Raijun can clear off a monster if you want it to. Uh, Kamongus could then clear off your Camasil. Then you activate Book of the Law, turn in Raijun into pretty much anything you want. You can turn him into a Magnalicia, you could turn him into a Purgatrio. Now I would go Purgatrio because with our Raijin we flipped a monster face down. See I forgot to do uh, Invocation but you would send that back and add Alistar back to hand. Uh, because we flipped a monster face down and we already, we guaranteed there's going to be a monster in defense mode with uh, Purgatrio, you can then attack with Purgatrio, dump in Alistar and doing piercing damage. Plus obviously Purgatrio then gets the boost from being, attack, being able to attack on monsters. Um, so it kind of gives you a good good amount of options right there um, to kind of extend your plays and go from there. Okay, so let's do our final test hand going um, second. That one wasn't too bad, obviously, because you had the Gamma, uh, you had the Kaiju on board as well. So you had a 2400 beta, and then you turned your Raijin. Use Raijin's effect, turn that up a level. Um, you could have gone into Mech Buff for a bit more protection. It's entirely up to you where you make that transformation or how you make that transformation. Um, one... Two, three, four, five, six. Okay, well, I'm straight away going to use Spellbook of Secrets to deck Finn. Um, obviously, if I'm concerned about my opponent's back row, I'll use Twin Twister. Um, so let's go into Spellbook of Secrets, searching out our Spellbook of Knowledge. Shuffle that out. Now, in this scenario, only because this is a test and we're going second, I would pitch Soul Charge off of Twin Twister. Obviously, you do have other options on this one. You can pitch your glass bell. You can pitch your gamma seal as well. The reason um, I won't be doing any of that. So actually, let's let's go straight off first. Let's use knowledge and magician. Let's see what our plus two is going to be. A book of the law and an Alistar would be amazing. Magical meltdown. That's our Alistar. Okay. So in this scenario, it's entirely up to you how you go from here. Um, if you activate your twin twister, 
Now, in the actual game, I'd probably hold on to Soul Charge because I know I'm not going to kill my opponent this turn. Um, so it's entirely up to you how you want to go with it. If you pitch your Glass Bell, you've got a, a nice easy rise in. Whatever you pitch, you're doing dealing with back row. Because then that stops your opponent MST and our Magical Meltdown. Or strike and our, uh, our Alistair when we normal summon Alistair. Amsterdam such as our invocation. Obviously, if your opponent's got like a masterpiece or a dryden or anything you think would disrupt that, you would have gamma sealed them as well. So that's entirely up to you. Um, activate invocation, turn Alistair, um, and then depending on what our opponent's got as well, we can abuse that ab ab ability too. Especially if we've gamma sealed them as well. Um, again, it's entirely up to you. I would go for the Wind Witch play, turning him into a Raijin, spin invocation back to deck, add Alistair back to hand. There's our Raijin up there. Now, again, you can use Raijin's effect to book a moon and a monster, depending on how many monsters our opponent's got on board and what monsters they've got on board. Um, attack with Raijin. And then, let's say, I, obviously, if, I've, if I want to get max damage on board, I'd go Purgatrio for this test hand. Um, but, if you want to be more defensive, I'd probably then say go Book of the Law, turn Raijin into um, Mechba. And then a Mechba can attack for 25, and Mechba has the ability to negate spells or monsters next turn, so you do have the ability. Um, other than that, you could then set your Book of the Law and kind of go from there to see how it goes. So that's it. That is our six test hands. Just to kind of showcase now, it's, it's not the fastest of decks, um, but it is a consistent deck. It will sit on strong, annoying monsters that your opponent will struggle to deal with, um, and just kind of do their do them basically. They'll, they'll sit on their strong monsters, cause your opponent issues trying to get past them, um, and then kind of push through the game and chip away at you. Uh, anyway, I hope this helps. I hope this gives you an idea of what um, wind witches and invokes kind of do. Um, yeah, because I think they could possibly they could still be they still are and they could still be depending on what the ban list kind of comes up with. A very very strong and um, interruptive and probably considered as anti-meta deck. Anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and until next time, guys. As always, happy dawning. If you like that video, why not check out our other videos available? We've got more deck profiles, pack openings, and of course duels. And don't forget to click on the most important button of all, that subscribe button, right in the bottom left-hand corner.